one way of getting more familiar with philosophy is by comparing it and contrasting it with science. And we could say that what we want to investigate is this question. How do you know what is true? We often are in conversations with friends or acquaintances with family. We hear things on the news, we see things on television or on the internet, and we wonder whether or not what we're being told or what we're seeing is true. Assuming you want to be reasonable and rational when you're investigating whether or not something is true, there are two primary methods of using your rationality to find the truth. The first is argumentation and dialogue. That's what philosophy is about. You listen for reasons to believe something, connect ideas together so that the ideas are supporting the conclusion. That's what we do when we are doing philosophy, presenting arguments, giving reasons to believe that something is true. The other method is observation and the scientific method. You discover truth by observing things on an individual basis. For example, you might go to the store and check the price of an item for yourself. But we can also include the scientific method that all sciences use. We propose hypotheses, we investigate, we gather data, and we see whether our hypotheses are supported or not. Upon successful repetition, our knowledge is extended, and then we can be in a position to share the results of science with other people. So there are two primary methods of knowing what is true and what isn't true, philosophy and science. Science and philosophy both are formalized attempts to understand the world, to know the truth about the world. Now, very briefly, science actually began in philosophy with Aristotle about 2,350 years ago, and it stayed within philosophy for about 2,000 years. And then the organized pursuit of knowledge was simply called philosophy. Even fairly recently, inquiries in areas such as physics and chemistry were called natural philosophy, and in some institutions in Europe, they still are. When the first universities were developed in Europe, these institutions were charged with investigating the nature of the world, and any investigation of truth was considered philosophy. Now, for about 2,000 years, that was what we called any kind of investigation into the nature of the world. Now, gradually, over time, the sciences developed their own specialized methodologies and limited their areas of inquiries. So disciplines such as physics, math, astronomy, chemistry, and biology mature. They became independent of philosophy and became their own disciplines. Later, the social sciences, such as sociology and psychology branched off, that was only about 120 years ago that that occurred. So I've created this chart. Obviously, we have philosophy and science. We're comparing and contrasting them. And we're going to talk about the goals of each, the methodology of each, and the evaluation of each. And there are significant similarities and differences. So let's complete the chart. Philosophy, the goal of philosophy is thinking clearly to make sure that we are using our critical reasoning skills to the best of our ability as we investigate things outside the purview of science. We set guidelines on how to argue and how to think clearly. The goal in science is different. The ultimate goal is to know what to believe. For example, if you're in a physics class and you say that force is mass times the speed of light squared, that would be wrong. Right? You should not believe that. It's not true. You're supposed to believe specific things in order to achieve success in science. Generally speaking, 
you don't have to believe the same things when you're investigating philosophy. Now, both philosophy and science seek truth. It's important to note that even though the goal of philosophy isn't always to tell people what to believe, philosophy is a quest to seek truth, to find out what is the true nature of the world. In terms of methods, philosophy uses the methods of reflection, analysis, and argumentation. We reflect on ideas, we analyze what is written, and we assess arguments to see if arguments are successful or not. Philosophy uses the tools of analysis and argumentation to convince someone that they are on the right path of finding the truth. We need not know, go into uh, great detail here regarding the methods of science. I'm assuming you're somewhat familiar with those. They include observation, experimentation, and verification. Once the experiment succeeds in science, you want to be able to verify it through repetition and have other people do similar experimentation with the same results, the same observations. Both science and philosophy use the method of reasoning to conclusions. Now, certainly that's obvious in philosophy with its use of argumentation. And of course, in science, once you have several observations together, you want to put those together to reach a conclusion, to have something to believe. Well, how do you evaluate success? For logic, for philosophy, you use principles of logic, right? In, that's primary, the primary way you evaluate success. Did the author or speaker follow the principles of logic? Did they have arguments that were constructed well? Now, of course, you can follow the principle of logic very well, but if you were talking about something mundane, that really wouldn't be philosophy. Philosophy explores very significant questions about the value and the nature of the world and how we know things, right? Things that science can't investigate. So overall, whether or not we have a good work of philosophy is decided by how well the principles of logic are followed. How good are the arguments? With science, verification is the primary way we evaluate success. We look for other people to confirm what has been found to be true. So if you do an experiment and you say that you found a way to turn lead into gold, of course that's going to be met with great doubt. So it would be evaluated. It would not be considered to be correct or true unless your experimental results could be confirmed by peers. If your peers could repeat the process, then you would have success.